everyone in this short video i will be talking about the wedge effect in choke and jig fractures how it interferes in your reduction when you are going to perform intramedullary nailing for choke and jig fractures so here comes the example you see there is a fracture in the choke and jig region in which you see there is thin lateral wall and the fracture line is exiting just lateral to the choke and jig tip while on the medial side the bone is intact and the fracture has tendency to go into varus reduction and the displacement here you can see it is in varus and this is a 3D model showing the fracture line exiting just lateral to the trochanter tip. Now, conventionally in intramedullary nailing for proximal femur fractures, we use the trochanter tip as the entry point. Here also, we have achieved the reduction to some extent with a well aligned medial cortex. And now we are attempting for an entry point. We are inserting the guide wire through the tip of the greater trochanter and directing it towards the medullary canal. So by this time, the technique appears to be satisfactory and is in line with the described technique for proximal femur nails or cephalomedullary nails. Now, the next step is to put the proximal reamer, which creates space for the head part of the proximal femur nail or cephalomedullary nail. So the proximal reamer takes the space as per the guide wire. Now the proximal reamer is directed towards the medullary canal as per the guide wire but the problem occurs when the white part of the proximal reamer hits the small fragile bone which was close to the fracture site and lateral to the tip of the trochanter so there are chances that it will break and the reamer will gain continuity into the fracture site so this is a track we are assuming will be created with the proximal reamer and the next step would be to guide the nail through the hole we have created but what happens because the bone that was lateral to the trochanter was fragile it breaks and nail now enters through the fracture site and because it has entered through the fracture site it will push the proximal fragment medially because of the hoop stress around the nail so the proximal fragment or the medial fragment will migrate medially and will tilt in a various direction here also you can see the nail has gone inside the fracture site and further passing of the nail will result in the wider part of the nail that is the proximal part inside the fracture site and this will push the medial fragment further medially and there will be tilting in various direction. So this is the wedge effect because of the fracture line exiting just lateral to the tip of the greater trochanter. Further insertion will lead to more displacement because the proximal part of the nail is the widest part and this will push the medial fragment further medially. So ultimately your fragment is lying somewhere here and the fracture will remain distracted. If you try to gain some compression at the fracture side then this part, this part will hinder the compression. It will not allow this part to match the lateral segment. Even if you try to gain some compression and if you achieve some compression here the proximal fragment will not translate laterally and there will be chances of varus displacement. Here also you can see the surgeon has tried to gain some compression at this site but has not been able to achieve compression at this site. The fragment which was medial to the nail is still distracted and there is some displacement in varus direction. So how to prevent it? So this is a similar case in which the fracture in which there is thin lateral wall and the fracture line is just lateral to the greater trochanteric area or the trochanteric tip. Now if we make an entry point here in the tip of the greater trochanter, the wide part of proximal femur will eat up whole of this bone and ultimately the nail will go through the fracture and that will push the fragment more medially. So we have to be careful in such cases. So here we have directed our guide wire more medially to the greater trochanter. Is not at the it's not at the tip it's medial to the tip so even if your fracture is not perfectly reduced while guiding your guide wire then also you can achieve good reduction at the end as we'll see in this case just by ensuring correct placement of the guide wire so here comes the next step we have entered the proximal reamer directed the proximal reamer towards the canal this is the track adequate for the proximal part of the cephalometallary nail cephalometallary nail or proximal femur nail. Now we'll insert the nail. You can see the nail is going through the proximal part, entering the distal part, 
and you see when the proximal part has entered into the cavity we had created it will pull the proximal fragment more laterally in line with the shaft why because our entry was medial and now nail has the axis of the shaft it will not push the proximal fragment medially because the entry was medial to the greater trochanter and the thick trochanter bone will not go is not going to break rather it will keep the nail contained perfectly you can see again the proximal part of the nail when enters here it will align this whole segment in line with the shaft part because distal part of the nail will now match the axis of canal while the proximal part of the nail since it is in line with the remaining part of the nail will pull the proximal fragment more laterally to match it with the distal segment now if there is some distraction you can gain compression after putting the screw and one satisfactory reduction has been achieved you can lock the screw so we see this is the entry point which should not be made in the fractures in which the fracture line is exiting just lateral to the trochanter area and this should be the entry point which we should make in these fractures so this should not be done and this should be done